I recently tested the most popular password managers and 1Password came out on top. So today, and in partnership with 1Password, we are going to deep dive into 1Password for Mac, show you how to get started, and look at some of the new features with the latest 1Password 8 for Mac release. Now, if you do want to just skip to the cool new features, then there'll be timestamps down below for you to follow. Otherwise, first, you'll want to sign up for 1Password. And thanks to the kind people at 1Password, there's 25% off a 1Password family subscription. Follow those links if you haven't already signed up. Once you have signed up, you'll want to download the apps for your devices. So head onto the App Store for your iPhone and download 1Password or onto the Google Play Store for Android to download 1Password for your Android phone. And also you can just follow the links to download the version for your laptop or your desktop. Next up, you'll want to move your passwords from whatever you're currently using. And 1Password actually have guides on the website specifically covering some of the most popular alternatives. But essentially, with each one, you want to export your passwords out and then import them via 1Password's website. Herein kind of lies a problem though, because when you export your passwords, they'll typically be exported in plain text into a single file that you then save to your computer. So once you have followed those steps to import them into 1Password, please, 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 please make sure you delete that file from your computer and go and empty the recycle bin. Because if you don't, then someone can quite easily get access to all of your usernames and passwords in that one file. Now, the second problem to be aware of, and I found this with literally every password manager, so it doesn't really matter which one you're switching from or to, is to double check that everything has actually moved over. If your last password manager had 2FA code stored in it, or if you had any other fields or documents, and, and basically anything outside of a username and password, then it is worth double checking to find anything that hasn't been brought over before you go ahead and delete or close down your old password manager accounts. So just be, just be very careful with this. Now, once you have imported them and they're all there, now you want to switch off your old password manager or if you're using a browser password manager, you'll want to switch off that password manager in the browser. Otherwise they'll clash with each other. And also make sure to go through your settings on your mobile phone to set one password as the default. Now everything is imported, let's take a look around the interface. Now you're gonna have all items at the top left to view well, everything you've got stored. And if you want to favorite any of these, perhaps ones that you use more often than others, then you just need to right click and add to favorites. And these will now display in the favorite section at that top left. Below that we have Watchtower, which is worth spending a, actually a bit of time going through to ensure you don't have any passwords that are really weak and maybe not reusing any passwords. And particularly the vulnerable ones, because these will have been identified in online breaches where you really should be changing these passwords. Under Watchtower, you have your vaults. And by default, you'll likely have a private or a personal one for you and maybe a shared one if you're using a family account. You can also create more vaults if you need to. And I've ended up creating vaults for work or specific projects, which allow me just to easily group these passwords together. You can also share vaults with friends or family and you'll know if they are shared by that little people icon next to the name. Now, in terms of the passwords themselves, selecting an entry will give you all of the information that you've stored. And if you click edit at the top right, you can add even more information, additional notes, change the password, attach files, link to other related passwords, and even generate unique security questions, which is a feature that I love, which stops you using that saying, you know, what's your mother's maiden name? What's your first pet's name? Those kind of security questions across all of your accounts. It is something I'd highly recommend using when storing any sensitive data. And you can also rename the password here if you had multiple accounts and you needed to know what each account was for. And if you want to share a specific item, then all you need to do here is right click, hit share, and then a box will pop up to ask how long you want to share it for and who you want to share it with. For example, if you hosted an Airbnb, you could securely share the pin code to visitors, which then automatically expires after their stay expires. And you can also share passwords with anybody. They don't need their own 1Password account to use it. A quick look at the preferences now. And what I would recommend doing as a Mac user is going to the security tab where you can check the unlock with Apple Watch box here, if you have an Apple Watch. Then go into privacy and make sure all of the boxes are checked here for Watchtower. And you can also go to browser here and set up one password for your browsers, which I would recommend you do, but as you'll find out in a moment, isn't actually needed in 1Password 8. So with all of that set up now, all you need to do is go find a website and 1Password will just take over and step in along the way to help you log in or create and save or update new logins whilst you sign up for, for new services and basically capturing all of the information as you go along. But if you want to manually create any new entries, you can also open up 1Password, click on new item in the top corner and they already have a ton of predefined records that you might wanna add. So pick the nearest match, which will prompt you for all of the relevant information, then hit save and you're done. 1Password also has a travel mode feature which allows you to bring specific passwords with you as you travel because, well, in some situations you could be asked by, say, a customs agent to unlock your device for them to just 
well, snoop around, I guess. So all you have to do is have those safe passwords in one vault and you mark that vault as safe for travel. So then when you do travel, you just turn on travel mode to instantly see all of your other vaults and passwords and records disappear. They're safely stored away. So those custom agents have nothing to look at other than what you've you know, deemed as safe for them to see. Now using this, you can protect any sensitive logins, encryption keys for work, or perhaps a and Summer's account. And then when you do finish traveling, just switch off travel mode and everything just snaps right back to where it should be. It is a fantastic feature for journalists, those traveling for work and those with some um, accounts they'd rather not be seen. Over to the brand new 1Password 8 for Mac features now. And one of the reasons I'm honestly legit fangirling over 1Password recently has been their sheer attention to releasing new features. In version eight, we've got some new additions like dark mode, a better experience when browsing and auto-filling, better security, better performance. So first, let's talk about one of the biggest new features of 1Password 8 for Mac. And also, if this video has been useful to you whatsoever, then please do consider subscribing as it really helps me to create more content like this for you. And with that said, let's start with the biggest and best feature of all, universal autofill. Universal autofill lets you sign into websites and applications at the push of a button and it's so so powerful that it doesn't even need the browser plugin to work. You simply hit command and slash on your keyboard and if one password recognizes the app or the website you're in it will automatically show you what it thinks you're looking for and if it's not you can of course just search right there but if it is the top entry all you literally need to do is hit enter and it will then fill the username, the password. It will even complete the two-factor authentication if that's stored in one password. And it handles multiple steps in applications which ask you for you know one field at a time. And and it hits submit for you at the end of it. Now, Universal Autofill has been a huge feature release for me. It saves me so much time with apps that I have to you know just repeatedly log in and out of when I switch accounts. And I love that it works across apps and websites by natively integrating at the Mac level without even needing browser plugins. Another new feature that's pretty simple, but oh so perfect, is when manually adding a new item. There are now tons of predefined categories from credit cards, driver's licenses, documents, email accounts, memberships, and my recent favorite, crypto wallets, which will prompt you for everything you should be storing and not forgetting, and also provides you an easy way to store your recovery phrases in this new kind of modern age of digital currency. And they're still adding more. You'll also see they have predefined templates there for developer tools like GitHub and the most popular websites, of course, like Facebook and Google and so many more. And again, this is a really simple feature, but it just shows that they've gone that step further to help make 1Password so much more user-friendly across the board. Security has also had a massive uplift in 1Password 8 for Mac, and I would highly, highly recommend that every 1Password user buys themselves a couple of these because these keys work like a front door key to your password manager. Once you set up one of these on your accounts, then you no longer have to worry about, you know, the what if someone gets into my password manager thing. They cannot get in unless they physically have your key. And because it's that secure, I'd always recommend getting two keys to your account and adding those two keys into your account just in case you lose one because, well, unlike a front door, you can't just hire a locksmith to replace the lock if you then lose your keys. But as an Apple user, they make them for, you know, USB, USB-C, and they've also got a lightning version. So just make sure to grab the right one for you and the devices you've got. And I'll also link to a video up here to just to help you choose one if you're not sure. Now you don't need to carry the key around with you at all times, but if you are signing into one password from a new device, then it will prompt you to insert the key or tap it on the back of your phone to confirm that it's actually you trying to log in. Another user-friendly feature for one password eight is when moving items between vaults which are shared. Now one password will prompt and show you who is now gaining access to an item. So you don't just accidentally share something without someone realizing. Search has also had a huge upgrade in 1Password 8 for Mac. And in all honesty, Search is so good and so fast that I just don't use anything else. I don't tag, I don't categorize my passwords. I don't sort them into collections, which is another new feature of 1Password 8, other than making sure they're in the right vault so they're shared or not shared with the right people. I just simply hit command and backslash to bring up this spotlight-esque search bar anywhere in Mac. I search for what I need. And from here, I can then easily copy usernames, copy passwords, or just go straight to the web website right from that search window. You can also use shift command space, which I actually find more natural as a Mac user, since that kind of command space is spotlight and is pretty much ingrained in every Mac user's brain since they've ever started. Performance is also hugely, hugely upgraded for me with 1Password 8. Now I know there was a lot of like, kerfuffle when they announced some changes to the way it was developed, but my God is 1Password 8 fast. Like, I, I've honestly never ever in my six months now of using 1Password 8 beta seen it so much as lag or stutter 
or crash or, or fall over in any way on my Mac. The search is just redonkulously fast to a point where I generally don't know how they can search and display that information that quickly. So whatever they've done under the hoods, it's good. It's really, really, really good. Did you also know that there is a hidden feature of 1Password 8 for Mac? Say you want to store your driving license or bank statement or basically any file in 1Password. Well, you can just drag and drop it on top of the application icon and it will pop up to ask you what you're wanting to save. So without creating a new password, finding the attached file button, browsing to find it, literally drag, drop, done. Awesome. Something else which you might also want to pair with the best password manager for 2022 is the best cloud storage or VPN for 2022. So why not go and check out those videos up here and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.